What's going on, guys? This is Bobby Douglas, and this is just the second half of the Florida State Louisville game. We were taking a look at Trent Forrest. Sorry it took me so long to get the second half updated. Just got kind of busy with school and stuff. But in my off time, I did manage to secure a microphone, as you can see. So hopefully it works okay. And uh, yeah, you know, so hopefully it, it makes me sound a little bit more clear when I'm going through some of these players. And yeah, I'm excited to get into this game. So let's go. He's going to be number three in the black, Trent Forrest. First half, we saw a lot of good things from him. I think his defensive IQ is really solid. I think he's a high caliber veteran leader. I think he's a better scorer and better facilitator than what people will uh, suggest. And yeah, I'm excited to see what he does in the second half here. So again, he's being guarded by Dwayne Sutton right now, it looks like. And uh, he's just floating around on the top of the key. Not much going on here. And there's Devin Vassell short on that jumper. And here comes Louisville. And I mentioned this in the first half video that I do think that even though he's only 6'4", I think his length does give him a little bit more positional versatility on the defensive end. And, and there's an easy steal for him. Let's see how he finishes this play. Good job cutting across the lane. And he's going to get the get the basket through contact. Could have been an and one there as well. But uh, I like that play from Forrest. And again, just heads up. Right place, right time. Manages to finish the lay-in as well. And again, he's a guy that's really rising in my board. I mean, I mean, I didn't have him top 100 when I first constructed my big board. Now he's in the 70s. I can definitely see him slipping into the 60s in that middle second round area as well. So really excited about how he's been growing on me. And you can see he's active defensively right here. Again, always has his head on a swivel and good guarding position on and off the ball. And uh, we got him bringing the ball up the floor now. And here he is with the ball again. And so he's in the corner. Here he's with the ball. No ball screen. Just simple kick out pass. And, you know, that's a decent look for uh, Anthony Polite. Just couldn't knock it down. And so Forrest not really involved in that play a whole lot right there. So, And there's Nwora for three, and he got it. Nwora is one of my big five draft sleepers. I'll have a video on that, hopefully sometime this or next week. But, um, yeah, he's going to be one of the guys mentioned just because I do really think his shooting is legit. And so here's Forrest running the offense again. Let's see what he does. Just going to cut through, get to that corner. Raekwon Gray can't really get anything going. And here we got Forrest. Good swing pass to Gray. And Gray's going to – could have finished that. Here we go. We got a steal for Florida State. A little bit up and down action right now. Pretty sloppy to start the second half. And here's Forrest. Let's see if he hits this three. And so, again, right there, he made, he made that three. Remember, he was only like a 28% three-point shooter, so he's not good from outside. But um, he made that one. You can see the release is a little bit slow, a little bit clunky. Um, maybe a little bit of a hitch, too. Takes him a while to get it off and load up. So I think once he becomes a little bit more, you know, fluid in that jump shot, I think there is potential there because he is an 82% free throw shooter. So hopefully, you know, that shot does develop. But, but again, he is a senior. And so you just kind of got to, you know, hopefully he get figures it out. He might not. So. Here we go, bringing the ball up the floor. Remember, he shot an absurd percentage from the field. I think he was 9 of 11 from the floor, and so he had 20 points. Usually he's not nearly that efficient, obviously. Nobody is. And there's MJ Walker on the turnaround. Nothing really going there. And here comes Noir on the fast break. So we're going to get Florida State ball. He's going to not really doing much here. Vassell's going to get that to go. And so here he is. Force is going to pick up. It looks like 94 feet. And he's not going to be guarding the ball, though. He's on fresh Kimball right now. But you can see how far away from his man. He's one pass away, and he wasn't really guarding him. That's the Florida State defense where they just kind of want to, you know, pack the lane a little bit. Right there, really nice job by Forrest going straight up. And uh, I think that's Malik Osborne coming coming over with the block. But Forrest pretty much set that up, as we'll see right here. Perfect straight up. Yeah, he may have gotten the finger on the ball there, too. Really nice, def disciplined defensive play. And again, that's what you get with Trent Forrest. He's just that, you know, very uh, savvy, clever leader. 
knows all the right plays, and there's a really nice read off the inbounds, and he gets that steal, and he's just going to attack Jordan Nora, and he's going to finish. Really nice take to the basket. That might be his most impressive sequence. Read the inbounds play extremely well, got a clean steal on the pass, and he just drove it right into the teeth of two defenders, and he managed to uh, finish with the layup. Good job staying upright right here, and we got a jump ball and a media timeout, so I will skip ahead to right here. And here we go. So the force is now on Ryan McMahon, who's big, who's a big-time shooter for Louisville, or he was a big-time shooter. I think he graduated. The force should be on the ball right here. Let's see what he does. Just floaty offense stuff right now. And here he goes. going to come off that little baseline screen. Let's see what he does here. So that's a really tough finish. I mean, I get it's over a shorter defender, but still, I do like the overall footwork. And again, it's a little bit herky-jerky. I think that's pretty clear. But, you know, if he can really just get that, be that effective around the rim in the NBA, I think he, that's a very positive sign. You see Forrest right there. It ended up in the dunk, but you did see him stay attached to Jordan Nwora, and he did box him out, um, which I thought was a pretty um, intelligent play. He was with the ball. Again, just reading the offense through the pick and roll. Not much going on here. Looks like we got a foul, I want to say. Yeah, and here we go. So Forrest is going to set a little back screen for MJ Walker, who's going to come through, and we got a foul here right now. So we'll get this. And Forrest is going to be out for a little bit right here, so I will skip ahead to 51-18 when he comes back in, and then I believe he's in for the remainder of the half. So, so yeah, we got the final 12 minutes here. And you can see Florida State's up by 10 on the road against Louisville. And this is early January, so Louisville is seen as like a top five level team. We got a timeout right here. And here we go. We're back. Should be another media timeout coming up at the next dead ball. So here's what. Let's see what he does here. So again, not, not anything crazy. And again, he was more of just like kind of a game manager type of point guard. But I do think that's what he's going to be in the NBA if he manages to stick. And I think he will. It's like just because you cannot place a pre as uh, big of a premium on... Um, a big enough premium on experience in terms of the college level. And you see all these guys, like Caruso wasn't a freshman, one and done. Like all the guys, all the ro young role players that are contributing on NBA teams. And I'm not talking about like the young superstars. I'm not talking about like a Luka Doncic. But like all the young role players, they were all four or even five-year guys. You look at Duncan Robinson for Miami. You know, um, Tyler Hero is an exception. But, you know, you look at Duncan Robinson for Miami. You look at, you know, Grant Williams was a three-year guy and he's getting minutes. Uh, for Boston, you know, so it's interesting to see Caruso, I mentioned. So there are just a lot of, there's a turnover by Trent Forrest, as we saw, but, you know, that's just, you know, a little bit loosey-goosey with the ball right there, but that's not really a major um, concern, I would say. I think, you know, I think he's overall, I think he averaged a lot of turnovers, I want to say around three, but uh, I just think, I trust his overall basketball instincts, so... But three turnovers a game and a Florida State offense that values ball movement and kind of just spreading the wealth, that's a little bit much, I'd say. But I don't really think that it's a major concern for him just because I think the defensive effort and intensity and intelligence that he brings, I think, is uh, a very solid NBA skill. That should not have been a foul on uh, Florida State right there, but it was. So I'll skip these free throws. And here we go. So yeah, Forrest, again, just making smart passes. Louisville looks like they're in a zone right there. And again, Forrest just making the right reads. Nothing spectacular, nothing super flashy, but just, again, being a game manager. He's not going to make mistakes defensively and offensively. They're usually pretty limited. And here we go. Let's see. So again, right in the grill of McMahon. That's scouting report defense. McMahon's a very good shooter. And again, really nice job, again, by Forrest just using that length. And just staying straight up, forcing that tough shot by McMahon. Ends in a basket for Louisville, but not at the fall of Trent Forrest by any means. And uh, he just managed to play that re extremely well. 
And we got a timeout for Florida State right here. Louisville's on a little bit of a run. So we will skip ahead to, I think this is where. Yeah, here we go. So then Forrest just kind of being the veteran presence. This team, again, just kind of moving the ball around, getting everybody some touches. And there's Vassell for three. He's going to knock that one down. We all know how much I love Devin Vassell in this class. Probably, I think I have him fifth or sixth, I want to say, right now on my board. But I have more time to figure that out since the draft just got moved back another month to November 18th. So that's just unfortunate. Good rotation by Trent Forrest right there. He cut off that drive and forced kind of a wild baseline pass. Uh, Noir is going to nail that shot. That's a tough shot to make. But Forrest, again, he was just kind of camping out in the lane a little bit. And then immediately, once he saw that baseline drive cap happen, he ran over to cut it off. So, again, just the overall defensive awareness on display there as well. And that's Devin Vassell getting that nice little layup. So then here's Forrest on the ball. They're going to switch that. So now he's on a 6'11 Malik Williams. <laughs> you know, that's just the staple of Florida State's defense. And here he is. Yep. I mean, really good contest on the 6'11 guy. Malik Williams isn't really known as a shooter, but um, still a very solid contest. Good job extending his arm and not his entire body. We see that so many times in the NBA where guys will put their entire body parallel with their contesting arm. And again, it's so easy to get called for fouls doing that. But Forrest does a nice job extending that arm out and keeping his legs and the rest of his body behind that arm. So that way, it's a less likely chance that he gets called for a foul. Just that, those little instinctual plays, I think, really um, really make him a viable NBA prospect. And here's Forrest coming off a little curl. Let's see what he does here. And again, another turnover. It looks like maybe a kickball. But again, just a little bit loosey goosey with the ball. Probably try to fit it into too tight of a window. I think he's saying my bad there. You got MJ Walker coming off that little screen. That's bottoms. Nice Florida State inbounds play right there. And the thing with Forrest, too, is that. He's not necessarily the most intense defender, and by in, by not the most intense, I don't mean this as a slight by him, but he it's just he's not all the way on all the time. He's very active when he needs to be active. He's very good at picking his spots. He's like a lion waiting for its prey. Just one little mistake and Forrest will be all over you, but he doesn't really take a lot of risks, which I think is a very good trait to have, and again, it's something that comes with his experience as a four-year player for Florida State and just his overall basketball intellect on the defensive end especially. And right there, I think we saw a nice little take, too, from him. I think he had a spin move, right hand, uh, finish right there. So here we go again. He's just switching on the top. Again, not much to do here. And it looks like it's going to be Florida State ball. Skip ahead here. And we got a timeout, actually, so. And here we go. So he's bringing the ball up the floor. Being guarded by Fresh Kimball, I believe. He's going to get a high ball screen. See what he does. Nice flash of a little handle right there. Good job just getting contact and getting to the line where he is an 82% free throw shooter. So again, that's that's solid with him. So if, as long as he could get to the rim you know, and just draw contact, I think he has a very um, bright professional future. And I'll watch him shoot these free throws here. And let's see what he does. And so, again, you just see kind of that close-up. He's only 6'4", but, again, super lanky. And the shot form, listen, it's not great, right? It's, you know, it's a little bit clunky. Released in front of his head. We'll see a better angle of it here, I hope. Yeah, you, so you can see it's almost like he's... It's too taut in a way where he has to think about having that elbow uh, straight, you know, just kind of line it up a little bit. And that that free throw, it also um, translates to his, you know, like uh, 
half court dribble pull up game, things like that. So he just needs to work on the overall fluidity and just get to the point where he's not thinking about every single shot he's taking. So now he's chasing around Nuora and then he kind of just leaves him in the corner. And again, that length allows him to make up space quick. Again, good job just finding Nuora to box out. And he probably was in a decent position to get that rebound as well. And so again, here we go. Looks like they're going to spread it out a little bit. Forrest will cut through to the corner. Not much going on with him here. Let's see what he does here. And again, there are there are a lot of possessions where Forrest isn't really featured in the offense, you know? Again, Florida State doesn't really go to one guy in specific a lot of the times. And, you know, I do think, you know, being the second leading scorer on this team behind Devin Vassell, you know, sometimes you maybe get a little bit selfish, but I don't think Forrest ever had any issues in terms of, like, not passing the ball or just trying to get his own shot going too much it just he's a guy that just can come in know his role immediately and just contribute within that role and again those guys are just extremely valuable regardless of where they're drafted you know especially among contending teams and you know it's not going to be a flashy pick it's not going to be a flashy uh free agency signing with Forrest but he's going to come in and I think he's going to benefit a team if he can just stick on the roster so here he's bringing the ball up again not much going on here just yet. It's a nice skip pass, and that's going to be a miss by, I think that was Vassell. I believe we got a foul on Malik Osborne. So, so again, Florida State's pressing. Good job at Forrest cutting off the ball right there. And then a really nice job getting back on defense. I don't know where the foul was on that. I need to relook. I need to rewatch that. But Forrest did a nice job just extending and getting up there, too. I don't think they're going to reshow it, but uh, yeah, I'll just skip these free throws. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know where the block, I don't know where the foul was necessarily. But yeah. Regardless, still good effort overall. I don't know if the foul was on Forrest either. So we got five minutes here, and Florida State's up by nine. Let's see, Forrest cutting around baseline. Here he is coming off a little curl. Let's see what he does here. And so again, really nice float game, and that's that's a very very solid um, just overall game that he has. And again, nine of 11, 20 points. So really good. But again, inside the three-point line, just getting to the rim, finishing over lankier guys, he's very, very good at that. So when you have that baseline of scoring potential already there in your game, I think that helps out a, a non-shooter like Trent Forrest really just help stick in the NBA if he can finish consistently at the rim because he's pretty strong. You know, he's not afraid of contact in any way. So I think that's a very solid um, skill to have and possess as he moves forward into the next part of his career. Got a, not a media timeout, but a timeout here. And so again, Florida State's being pressed. So right here, you can see it's Patrick Williams and Devin Vassell. I wish they had to get it to Forrest, but now they got MJ Walker. And yeah, that's, again, Florida State, they're just, they're very fun to watch just because they're so active defensively. They have so many long athletic guys, and they can just swallow teams up whole defensively. This year, Forrest was pretty much the captain of that. But next year, it's going to be just another crop of really long combo forwards. You got Scotty Barnes coming in, who's probably going to be like a top 15 pick in the draft. You know, you got a bunch of guys. Um, I think there's uh, Sardar Calhoun, who I think is a Juco guy. He's like 6'6 and lanky. So again, this Florida State team, just they just replenish with athletes, and it's just so fun to watch. And what he does here. Forrest just kind of looking for Vassell in that mid post. And Vassell is, can't really get anything going. Forrest left the reset. Nice simple pass within the offense. MJ Walker bottoms right there. Let's see. And again, right there, really nice lockdown defense by Forrest. Again, look at how wide and low he gets. It's like kind of like a spider, kind of just like sprawling out, right? 
And, um, you know, he moves his feet extremely well, doesn't uh, touch the opponent really, you know, stays out of foul trouble. It's very fun to watch. I think we have free throws here, so let's get these. Here we go, MJ Walker with the ball. Louisville looks to be in a 2-3 right here. Let's see what happens. MJ Walker again. Is he going to knock it out? Wow. Again, this guy is a McDonald's All-American, and he's returning for his senior season. Somehow he's not being talked about, and he had so many games like this where he just went nuts. He's going to be really good this year for Florida State. And again, good job by Forrest. Just being a little bit methodical, and again, not really. So right there, maybe you, like, you want to see a contest. But again, he's not going to force the issue defensively. He's going to be very methodical on how he approaches it. And again, just waiting for that one mistake, and then he goes. It's just a really mature way of defending. Got a, I don't know what happened there. Foul looks like Louva or Florida State's in the bonus, so I'll skip these free throws. Oh, we just saw this, my bad. Dickie V's just going to go talk about LSU. Might miss 10 seconds, but nothing really happened there. And here's Ford's going to get the ball. Louisville's not fouling. This game is basically over. Let's see what Forrest does here. Man, Patrick Williams is going to bury that. He's starting to get a lot of late lottery love, maybe even top 10. You know, people are really starting to fall in love with Patrick Williams a little bit. Me, I'm still in my, I'm still have him in the 20s-ish, but, you know, I could definitely see the appeal. Forrest, really nice job right there. Just kind of just like going straight after that lob post pass. I think, I don't know if he managed to get a hand on it or if it was Raekwon Gray, but either way, just the activity and then the overall timing of it was really, really solid. And we got free throws right here. And Forrest is on the ball again right here as we wind down this game. There's David Johnson, who I really like as a prospect this upcoming season. You know, he battled a lot of injuries for Louisville his freshman year, number 13. But, um, you know, he's going to be, he'll be fun to watch. He had that great game against Duke where I think they ended up winning. More fouls here. Yeah, this game is basically over. It doesn't look like... Yeah, it doesn't look like Lewis was going to foul. He was going to get it across the timeline here. And, yeah, I'll just end it here since there's nothing really going to happen in the last 20 seconds anyway. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I'm sorry it took me so long. I just got kind of busy with school, but, you know, no worries. I got my microphone now, so I'm excited to make new, more videos. Um, and, yeah, I got a lot of new things coming, more prospect evaluations, uh, some more... Uh, you know, general videos, sleeper videos, maybe some team needs videos. And again, if you have any suggestions, I'm pretty much open to anything at this point. So just uh, drop them in the comments below and make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it, as that really helps me out. And yeah, thank you guys for continuing to stick with me and we will see you in the next video. Thanks.